Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Andrew Bartolotta. We're always honored to bring you conversations with organizations and individuals making an impact in our community and around the globe. And today we're gonna talk about making customer interactions more human, products more inclusive, marketing more charitable, and making work more meaningful with B. Bocalandro, corporate purpose advisor and author of Do Good at Work. B, before we talk about Do Good at Work, talk about your background and career. And first off, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Andrew. Um, I love the power of good focus that City Current has. So I've spent 20 years helping big brands, uh, FedEx, Aetna, Toyota, Eventbrite, basically do good from, <clears throat> from the business platform. And about seven years ago, I had this one experience where I gave a presentation at Toyota to their senior leaders, and I was walking to my car. I was really far from the building because I wasn't driving a Toyota. <laughs> so I parked it as far from the building as I could. And I heard footsteps and I was like, who would be out here in the far end of the parking lot tracking me down? And we'll call him Alex, but it was a T Toyota employee. And he said, I snuck into your meeting because I saw in the meeting reservation system that there was a meeting about Toyota doing good, about social purpose, about making a difference out there. And this is what I want for my job. Now he was about 20 something, I would guess. And he said, I want to be able to sit down on Friday and feel proud of my work week because it made a contribution to the world. It wasn't just about selling cars at a profit. So I, that experience made me realize that I love my work with senior executives and people who have corporate social responsibility in their title. But that experience made me realize that there, there probably are more Alex's out there and that I could equip any Alex's out there. So these are individuals who want their own work to have more meaning to do so, so that they can sit down this Friday, not 40 Fridays from now, waiting for their leadership to have this trickle down to them, but they can sit down this Friday proud that their work week made a difference. And so, so that's, that's why I wrote Do Good at Work. It's meant for all the Alex's out there, anybody who has been awakened to their need for their everyday job to make a difference. I love that. And you say early in the book that no matter who we are, or what our job is, we can do work that matters. And like you said, we can end our work week delighted to have brightened some recess of the planet. I love, I feel like that's so strong. And like you said, like those Alex's out there, we want to end on Friday knowing that we made a difference this week and we didn't just waste time that we'll never get back in a corporate job that you're sitting in a cubicle, not really making a difference. Expand a little bit of, on that quote. And um, for me, it was very powerful. But what do you hope people gain from this book? It turns out that there are many Alex's out there. So this made me look into this. And the, the book has over a hundred example of Alex's out there. So there are people driving trucks that uh, are sitting down on Friday, proud of their work because it made a contribution to others or to a societal cause, what I call job purposing. So they have job purposed. And uh, there are people in middle management. There are people in procurement. An example is, let's say that your job is uh, designing surfboard fins. I'm from a surf town, so <laughs> surfboard fins. And you could just say, well, I'm going to design the, the most effective surfboard fin out there or the hippest or something like that. But you could look at your job as an opportunity to make a contribution out there. And you might decide, well, you know what? The, at least I can use recycled plastic so that I'm not creating more plastic and which ends up in the ocean and in our bloodstream and everywhere in between. You could say, when I, when I go to test these fins, I could bring a bag and pick up any trash that I see on the beach. You could say, and this is a real example, 
you know, what if I put a sensor in the fin that sends data on the ocean, you know, temperature and those types of things, salinity, to scientists all over the world that are trying to preserve our oceans. Now, this surfboard designer, every day that he goes into work, he's helping to save our oceans. That's an example of job purposing. And again, there are over 100 examples in the book. And it's, it's a simple practice, but it doesn't mean that it's easy to start doing it. You, it's, it's, it takes, a, it takes a, a change in focus or in mindset to be able to see these opportunities, but it's, there's nothing all that complicated about it. And anybody can do it. That's one conclusion that I have reached in the last seven years of looking at, at this and writing the book is that really it's impossible to come up with a job description where there isn't some way to tilt it so that it makes a meaningful contribution to others. It can be your cubicle mate or it can be a customer or to a societal cause. I love the term job purposing and when you talk about the uh, surfboard fins as well because in my mind, in a lot of minds, when we think of um, of purpose in the workplace, we think of those people sitting in the big buildings and like you said, the cubicle and what I said, like the, the cubicle work and making it meaningful. But there's so many people out in the fields doing work that may be repetitive or there may be um, where they're dealing with customers face to face on a daily basis. And for them, there's ways that they can implement job purposing as well um, in a meaningful way. What are some, you did say it's not, it's not complicated, but you do have to have a, a growth mindset and a mindset of being able to job purpose. For someone that says, I sell blank or I, my service is this, what are maybe one or two tips to start thinking of how they can job purpose and what they do? In my book, I have uh, an exercise that is just a way to help us shift that mindset so that we see these opportunities just like the individual who was designing fins did and uh, it's it's got four steps and so basically i'm kind of cheating i'm looking at, at it right here but uh it's got four steps uh but it's a pretty simple exercise so first you just set a reminder on your smartphone or your computer like two times a day uh, I, at relatively random time so that you're not hitting the same, you're not doing the same thing every time, right? Mm -hmm. And when this reminder goes off, all you have to do is ask yourself a few questions. How is the last person I interacted with doing? Do you even know you might have met with a coworker who there was a beautiful opportunity to contribute to them and you, you missed it, right? Because you weren't thinking of their well-being. But uh, maybe they were really struggling with the PowerPoint and you would have been able to help them. That is also job purposing, by the way. It, it doesn't have to be some official fancy cause out there. It can just be helping one other person. So the first question is, how is that last person I interacted with doing? What might they be thinking or feeling, et cetera? The second question is, can I complete the task I'm doing or last it in a manner that is more charitable, equitable, environmentally sustainable, or otherwise job purpose? So let's say that you're buying supplies. That's when the timer went off, you're buying supplies and you're like, hmm, is there a way I can do this that is one of those things, more charitable? And it's like, well, what if I decided to only buy supplies now from small minority owned businesses. There you go. You just job purpose that task. And then the last question is looking back at the last day of work, what opportunities did it contain to a job purpose? And I have 12 different ways of job purposing. So if you happen to have the book, you can go through each one of them. But if not, you can just say, let's not look just right at this moment, but look back for a, a day. If you do this for a week, you will see opportunities to job purpose. So five days, two times a day, that's 10 times. Of course, if you're driving or something like that, don't 
probably skip this exercise, but uh, this simple exercises exercise helps you see opportunities. The other, uh, the other easy tip I have is if you go to my website, so it's dogoodatwork.com, there is a purpose generator there for you. It's free, it takes less than 10 minutes, and it will ask you questions about your specific work situation, and then it will give you an idea for job purposing that is customized to you. So uh, use it, and so far, 88% of users have said that the idea they got was actionable and they they could move forward with it and it, it totally worked for them and that was actually my next question was about this purpose generator because i saw it on your website and i thought what a great idea because when we think about job purposing and i love that you said that it doesn't have to be this grandiose idea with a super high tech and months of development. These are actionable things that you can do now. There might be that person, like you said, that needs help with a PowerPoint or someone maybe from an older generation that doesn't understand how to hook up their Bluetooth keyboard to, to their new monitor. These simple tap, tips and tech things that, that you can help others with. But I love the exercise of how can I purchase something that from a company that gives backers from a small minority owned business. These are great, like actionable job purposing that we can do in our lives every single day. And that's what's so great about it. It isn't just those big moments that carry us on this eat, pray, love, you know, destination of what to do. Like these are actionable things right. we can do each day. That's so, I, I just yes. love it. I love it. That's such a great point, Andrew, because we Americans especially, we're like, what is our purpose in life? And we need to figure out what is our big contribution in life because we're becoming aware that if, if we are living on purpose, that all these great things happen, right? We're happier, we're healthier, we're more productive, we're, we're you know, life goes better, which is all true. That is all backed up by research. But what people don't realize is that there's, you don't have to have clarity on that purpose in life and that statement on your bathroom mirror saying this is what I am doing I am solving world hunger to benefit from purpose from meaning because anytime we make a meaningful contribution to others or to a societal cause we feel like we are living on purpose. It's like, it's, it's the simple hack. So it doesn't have to be solving hunger. It can just be carrying the boxes uh, for the administrative assistant who was struggling with it. And a very small contribution like that will increase our happiness. This has been studied over and over and, all, and all this evidence is in the book. There's over 150 footnotes backing it up. But not just that moment, but we go to bed happier and they even measured the happiness two weeks later and it's still there. So your point that it can be simple and yet still be powerful is completely backed up by data right now. And I love that you are so data driven too, because it's not a book of it's not just a feel good book, it's a do good book and it's backed with science and research. And that's what's so powerful. Another part of the book that I love is the illustrations and beautiful motivational oh, okay. quotes. And so what I learned was that that you actually illustrated those, right? I did. I did. <laughs> and they're I really did great. Fun. It's yeah. <laughs> and I even saw like on the, on your blog, like there's some really great illustrations and they're, they're simple line drawings, but they're beautiful. Um, one of my favorite quotes that stuck out was um, by the quotable queen herself, which you can actually see behind you. If you're watching this is Oprah Winfrey, which says the key to realizing a dream is to focus not on success, but on significance. Are there some quotes, uh, motivational quotes from the book that really speak out to you? Are there some favorites? Well, what I find fascinating is what speaks out to readers. So on the on the ebooks, you know what people are highlighting. Uh huh. And uh, the character Bobby, who's my father, completely stole the show. So the 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 one you know the 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 one quote which is highlighted the most is. Uh, Listen beyond the clamor of your wants 
for the whisper of the world's needs. This is, and, and that, and in fact, I, I was talked into like creating mugs with, you know, coffee mugs with this image. So that one really speaks. I think the Oprah, you know, it's funny because the different parts of the book speak to different people. So right. just when I think, oh my God, this is the, you know, this is the quote and this is the drawing that stole the show, then someone will say, I loved, you know, the Charles Antis uh, drawing and quote, you know, I'm, you know, whatever, page 117, I'm making up that page. So if you have the book, don't look it up. And I'm like, oh, it, it's really fascinating that, it, you know, different parts of the book just kind of catch people in a different way. So, um, but in a sense, they all speak to me, which is why I put them in there. It was my way of honoring all the shoulders that I'm standing on to be able to have written this book. In a recent blog post on your website, you said a good job today isn't just a good isn't just good for the well-being of the worker. It also does good. CSR is increasingly considered an employee employment benefit that is collectively negotiated alongside vacation days and work at home policies. You also say if your job doesn't improve the world, improve your job. What are some of the top CSR friendly employee benefits that you think more businesses should inherit? That's what's fascinating. So managers, listen up because uh, most managers are not aware of this. Most executives are not aware of this. But uh, it used to be that employees would make a big fuss. They would march. They would sign petitions for their own pay, for their own benefits, for you know, their, their own working conditions. Now that's still happening. But what is fascinating is that now employees are risking their jobs sometimes for things that have nothing to do with them. So you have Wayfair employees marching, walking out on the job because their employer is selling product to a customer that they feel is doing something wrong. Uh, and you have Walmart employees walking out because Walmart is selling guns. So increasingly, employees are not seeing their job as, as defined by how it treats them, but their job and how much they like it and how loyal they are to it and how much effort they're willing to put into it is determined by how much their job contributes to society out there. And it's not just enough to not do damage now. It's as an employer, you actually have to stand for doing some good out there as well, according to these employees. That's a very unique perspective. And you're right. It isn't just about like how it's affecting you, but how, how it's affecting the consumer in those ways. And, and people are making huge change to where if I'm, if I'm not mistake, mistaken now, Walmart, maybe, in, maybe it's just my area or maybe it's nationwide, isn't selling guns because of those marches and those those petitions and, and such. And so they are making great change that's really affecting how they can um, have more purpose in their job and, and know that where they work is making a positive change in the world and not a negative change that impacts them and their future generations. Sometimes these movements get the outcome they want and sometimes they don't. But I think as a manager, you're going to have to manage it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's... It, and the increase in these movements from employees uh, demanding basically purpose jobs, mm -hmm. companies doing good out there through everybody's everyday work is huge. So it's probably only going to be more of a management issue in 
one year and then in two years and then in five years it's probably going to be through the roof if it keeps going up the way it's been going the the cover of do good at work uh, has an endorsement from adam grant he's the four-time new york times best-selling author and host of the work life podcast saying that the book is fun to read which is unusual for both business and self-help books and your book is both of these. How is it fun to read? I know we talked about the way that it's backed with data and has beautiful, fun little doodles and illustrations and motivational quotes, but talk about how it's fun to read. Yeah, okay. So I, when Adam Grant uh, gave that endorsement of the book, I literally jumped up and down because it's relatively easy to write a book that gets the information across. Mm -hmm what I found more difficult and it's the one of the reasons it took me five years to write frankly was I want this book to feel like you're reading a novel like it's like a walk in a beautiful park and and yet it has like the full power of informing you and equipping you and so I worked very hard at this so it's it's filled with stories and uh, characters that again people <laughs> tend to fall in love with and uh, it's 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 not long by design in fact I there's about 60 pages that came out just to make it really accessible mm -hmm. so the, again, the, I, I've been working with executives and with people who have corporate social responsibility in their title for years, and I, I love them dearly, and I love my work, but this book is, this is for, you know, it's for the delivery driver. It's for that uh, junior salesperson who hasn't read a book in five years. It's, it's for, it's meant to be accessible to anybody. So because of that, it also exists in audio form and actually, of course, in ebook form so that it is an easy dig digesting, you know, digest, I don't know if that's a, <laughs> that's a term, but yeah. for anybody out there, you don't have to be an executive or you don't have to be a college graduate to understand the points in the book and hopefully to enjoy it. Well, I think even for someone like myself, who I love reading articles online, but for me to pick up a book, it needs to have that digestible content that has great research, backed research, it's fun to read, and it looks really sharp. And I think that's what I love about your book too. It has all those things to offer. And it's it's a no brainer. We need to do good at work and job purposing. That is where people need to realize that the work that they do can be purposeful. Another thing that I love um, that I saw on your website is the do good at work workbook, which is a fascinating compliment to your book. Talk a little bit about the workbook um, that you have as part of um, this, this job purposing mission. The book was barely out. And frankly, it wasn't my brilliant idea. It was readers. They were like, I'm writing all over the margins and I'm, I'm writing on stickies and stuff. But it, it would be really great if you gave us something to accompany this book where we could we could use the book as a platform for our own plan for making our work meaningful so that's what the workbook is meant to do and it's completely free so you go to do do good at uh, do good at work.com and you can download it there under resources. What puts a smile on your face when you look at the work that you've been able to accomplish both with senior executives and now having a resource for those everyday heroes in our community that are working to have a more job purposeful, um, purposeful work? I love hearing from readers. So I won't tell you where in the book, but in the, in the book, there is a part where it's like if you're still having problems with job purposing then you know here is the email to contact me and a lot of people use some people use it to contact me and say you know i'm trying this but i'm running into these problems but actually a lot of people are using it just to share their stories one of my favorites is two construction workers. So they're in a truck all day going from construction site to construction site. I think because they're inspectors 
mm. of the different sites and they listen to the audiobook in the in the car over you know a week or something of driving around and they they came up with the idea based on the on listening to the audiobook well how can we job purpose and they said you know we drive through this road all the time that has a lot of illegal dumping on the side. We have a truck. We know how to get rid of solid waste because you know we're a construction company. And frankly, often we're early to our sites and we don't know what to do. So we stop for another cup of coffee and then we're over caffeinated. <laughs> so instead of doing that, why don't we pull over, throw those TVs into the back of the truck and now we have made nature more pristine. We've made our, you know, a beautiful contribution. And they said that just, it seems like it was only a few months of doing it. They have cleared out 12 miles of road. And now it sounds like I got another email from them that they're gonna be, the, their, their company actually is going to be recognized by the town because they managed to do that. So I love those stories. So any of you out there who, who have read it or are going to read it, I love hearing hearing those stories. And if your story is that you're struggling, uh, let me know as well, because I'm here to, to, to help you get through that. And being able to see that your book is not only receptive to um, a change mindset, but also that people are being recognized for for those actions and job purposing. That's that's <laughs> wonderful. That, I mean, that's the ultimate like smile on your face. So that's a great answer. Yeah. Where can people go to learn more about you, purchase Do Good at Work, and support your efforts? You can purchase Do Good at Work anywhere books are sold. You can, you can get it from your library. In terms of learning more, and I, I am very dedicated to helping readers and even non-readers move forward with this, so I have a newsletter and all of that, go to dogoodatwork.com. I'm also on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Well, B, thank you so much for coming on the City Current Show. Love what you're doing on the theme of job purposing and um, thank you for working to power the good. Thank you for your work to power the good, Andrew.